Squishies! Welcome back to another vlog. This is Star vs. the Forces of Evil, episode 20... Uh, completely blanking on the first half. The second half was called Just Friends. Um... Okay, so... The first half of this... Uh... I don't know, I was kind of alone with Star on the first half of this. Uh, usually she represents, like, this alien attitude, but this time, uh, she was presented as kind of the more grounded one. And I'll be honest, I'm kind of with her in terms of her position at the start of the episode. Uh, I don't really get why schools have mascots or why people care about them. Um, it's never made much sense to me. Uh, I mean, it's a cute backstory. Uh, excuse me. It felt... I don't know, the revelation of obscure, absurd town backstory felt a little Gravity Falls to me, which is not a bad thing to feel at all, because Gravity Falls is awesome. Uh, the... Uh, I liked the old-timey voice out of the, you know, Ken Burns Civil War documentaries. Uh, down to the little detail of the person not reading the letter with quite the emotional emphasis it seems to be asking for. Um, they didn't do the lengthy pause indicated by the two ellipses in the last two lines, and... That happens a lot in those kinds of documentaries that have the vo record, the voiceovers of reading a letter, uh, which, of course, most famously the Ken Burns Civil Wars documentaries, but you see them in other stuff, too, uh, where our main source of information is letters. Um, our main source, like, trying to capture what life was like. Um prior to fairly recent point, letters are the main way we can see that. Uh, but very often, it's not well directed uh, or acted. Um, it, it misses the rhythm or the emotional emphases, and they captured that here, and I think that's... That was, to me, the funniest joke in the episode. Um... But yeah, just people invest so much importance into objects, and I'm just like, eh, why? Uh, one thing that was interesting to me was that uh, they took the stock sitcom plot of the uh, beloved pet dies, so the... Uh, parent tries to replace it, and of course, the kid immediately realizes. Even though it looks identical, there's some little detail that the parent missed, and the kid immediately realizes that it's not their pet. And that was parodied here with Storm bringing in the new statue. Uh, but also resonated a little, too, because... Uh, while, you know, I would never be deliberately cruel to an animal, I've also never bonded with one the way that, uh, people seem to bond with their pets. It's just, like, like, there's been animals that have been very affectionate toward me 
and I liked them, but I've never really had a pet that was mine, and never really felt the need for a pet that was mine, and never felt a strong sense of attachment to a pet. Um, certainly never felt like an animal was part of my family. Uh, which I know is a common feeling for pet owners. Uh, so, but, but I recognize that a lot of other people do feel that way and that those feelings should be respected. And the same is true for when people have feelings that don't make a lot of sense to me about an object. Um, as long as they don't cross the line, uh, which is always a danger, uh, when, you know, there's the commonly cited ethical principle of, uh, you know, treat people as people, not as things. Uh, but part of that is there has to be a distinction between how you treat people and things in order for you to not treat people as things. In order for you not to treat people as things, you also have to not treat things as people. So investing too much caring and love into an object can have negative consequences. Um, the one I usually point to is kind of the most obvious one is uh, abortion, where people take an object, treat it like it's a person, and then use that as justification to treat an actual person very poorly by forcing them to be pregnant, which is, frankly, horrific. Um, so, but as, so, you know, we see in the episode, like, they're going over the top, but at the same time, like, it's also not, it's not good to care too much about objects, but you also, you know, if you care about people, which, you know, you kind of should, uh, you have to, you have to at least respect what those people care about. Uh, so, some degree of caring about an object is fine and probably good. I, myself, don't particularly feel it. But I know other people do, and I respect that. Um, certainly there are some objects that symbolize something I care about. Um, and those objects are, because they symbolize something, are meaningful to me. Um, but the object itself isn't particularly anything. And, you know, maybe that's, that's it, is people invest in mascots because of their, they symbolically represent something the person cares about, which then gets you into people caring about their schools, which I've also never really gotten. Um, certainly no school I ever attended was worth caring about, because they didn't care about me. Um, that's generally true of any institution. Uh, but I'm, you know, a filthy ant sock. I have, you know, you would expect me to say that. Second episode was, you know, uh, more, uh, Jackie and, uh, uh, Marco. They had their, you know, you know, it, it was, it played out as Marco's, anxi you know, most of the episode was about Marco's anxieties about, uh, Star and Jackie getting too close and him being left out, which is actually a recurring theme in this show of characters being worried that they'll be left out. But then it ends with Star feeling left out. We kind of already knew that Star had feelings for Marco that she's kind of in denial about. 
uh, or that she doesn't want to be there. Uh, so again, we're seeing that. Uh, I really do not like Star and Marco as a ship. I wish Star would just get over it. But if it takes the show to interesting places, cool. I just don't have a lot of confidence that it will because shows usually don't go interesting places with this kind of story. Uh, love triangles are boring. The only accept acceptable endings for a love triangle, the only ways to make it not boring, are to have the final outcome be either poly or queer. Um, you know, all three ultimately decide to just be polyamorous together. Awesome. That's an ending that hasn't been shown a gajillion times, so let's go with that. Or, uh, same gender members of the triangle get together and they become quote-unquote endgame, uh, which is what Cora did. And that's acceptable. But even there, like, the actual love triangle itself was really boring. It's just the resolution that was interesting. Um, so, eh. I'm not hugely enamored with that plot line. Um, I did notice uh, one or two lesbian couples. I say one or two because there's a couple shown kissing, and then later there's a couple shown facing forward, and they look like they might be the same couple, um, but I'm not certain. Uh, so, it was a lesbian couple, and what I think was probably a gay couple kissing, uh, which is cool. Um, although, like, background characters being gay at this point is, like, the bare minimum for a cartoon. Uh, kind of certain to expect more than that. Uh, but it's something. So, yay. Anyway, uh, I think that's about it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Patreon for early access to vlogs, essays, let's plays, and more. And I will see you all next time. Bye!